Today we have a special guest, and it'll be in person. His name is Jeff Dice, and he happens to be now the president of the Mises Institute. Jeff, welcome to our program. Thank you, Ron. Good to see you again. Well, well great. Uh, we've known each other now for probably about 14 or 15 years, and uh, I had the brilliance to uh, hire you in the congressional office, and uh, and you got a job that you weren't particularly trained for, uh, and yet you were fantastic, and you were the press secretary. Right. So, how did right. you feel about that job? Uh, were you all were you surprised that that was the job, and and did you wonder about it because you weren't exactly you know trained in a conventional fashion? But right. you know, I knew you knew the philosophy, and I knew you could write. So. Well, it was surprising, but a, a dear, longtime friend of mine, Joe Becker, was already working for you. And at the time, I was single, no children. I was able to sort of pick up and move. And so uh, there was a vacancy in your office, and you needed somebody who could, who could write and who also had sort of the libertarian and Austrian philosophy in their background. So it just sort of came together, and, and I found myself moving to Washington. And that was uh, the year 2000. Well, did you have any hesitation? Because you know you got a government check. <laughs> you know, and some of us aren't that excited about working for the government. Sure. Did you have to, you have to talk to yourself and say, well, this is one part of the government. If we're going to have government, at least it's, you know, a, a legitimate part of the government. Sure. I mean, that's, that's something to, that I considered, but I think mainly I just wanted the opportunity to work for Ron Paul simply because I had known you and known of you, uh, since you ran in 1988 as a libertarian and it was just an exciting opportunity and I knew Joe really well so I had wow. a very sort of inside scoop on what the office was like and it just sounded like a, like a, like a fun opportunity. You know, and one thing that I've tried real hard and I've gotten some credit for this is that I didn't have one individual on the staff, uh, you know, the chief of staff that went out and just filled up all the slots and the member didn't get to know him very well, and I was very interested in, in knowing uh, knowing the in, individual. But the other thing I did in my office, and, uh, and and you did this, although you were doing press work, you also had a lot to do with the legislation dealing with taxes, and uh, in many ways, and, and you have uh, a legal background. You right. have a, a law degree, and you got involved in taxes, and um, this actually was beneficial in the sense that, well, when you got a little restless in Washington, uh, uh, you actually did some tax work outside of Washington. Yes. Uh, before I came to work for you, I was a tax lawyer. Oh, okay. And then I, uh, after I stopped working for you, I left and went back into, uh, into sort of ca corporate tax work in that world. So I've been sort of in and out of it, but now I'm back into the world of ideas at Mises. Right. You know, and the other thing that I was generally pretty proud of in Washington is that the turnover, my staff has been rather low. And there are some, as you know, in the other office, sometimes there's a turnover every six months or a year, you know, for the chief of staff. Wait, would you uh, like to name any names? Huh? No, I, I don't do this. I, I'm pretty, uh, pretty conservative on that. But uh, you know what, uh, what I'm talking about. But yes. you, you, you did leave. And then my chief of staff, uh, Tom Lazardo, had been with me a long time. He helped me get reelected back in uh, 1996. Yes. And uh, then it was time that he had had enough of it. And that is when I called you and uh, you expressed an interest and you came back as the chief of staff. Right. And uh, of course, that was beneficial to me. You had known the office and and you uh, were well versed in the in the philosophy. What um, what did you find the neatest part of the office? I know we did a lot of education where I don't know whether you ever got frustrated with me when I would get annoyed with legislating in the sense of tinkering with legislation. But uh, you were really very helpful in helping me do the educational part of what how we use that office. Well, when I left working for you the first time and I came back, your profile, your public profile had increased enormously because of the 08 presidential campaign. So I knew when I came back, um, you had not yet decided to run in 2012. But your, your public profile was much higher. So the ability for you to communicate with people to spread your ideas was much greater than it was, you know, in, in earlier. And so to me, it was thrilling to be able to come back. And we all viewed it as, a, as, as primarily a, an educational and outreach tool, you know, using your notoriety in your office uh, to spread the message, not only of liberty, but also of, of Austrianism in particular. 
Yeah, and of course, uh, it became known that uh, we had our conferences with other members, and uh, you were always helpful in that in bringing special speakers in. Although they weren't huge, they were significant in that others, uh, you know, were uh, influenced by that. But um, you, you of course, stuck with me and helped me close down my congressional office. And uh, I had the great wisdom to move to Texas and uh, not become a lobbyist in Washington. And uh, you went back to doing some tax work. But then uh, I understand uh, a friend of ours by the name of Lou Rockwell, you know, got a hold of you. And uh, he decided to change uh, his career a little bit. And now you're a famous person. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> now you're the, the president of the Mises Institute. Yes, yes. And it's strange how things work out. I mean, I, I met you originally, you know, years and years ago. And then through you, working for you is how I met Lou Rockwell and came to be familiar with the Mises Institute. And, of course, all of us on, on your congressional staff, we used Mises as a, as a huge resource. We would go to the website. We would pull articles. Uh, we, we had all read, you know, obviously, the, at least the basics of you know, human action, uh, the, you know, Murray Rothbard's work, et cetera. So we would try to pull as much of that into your speeches and statements and press releases mm -hmm. as we can. So to create a more intellectual uh, uh, sense to your work, because as you know, most members of Congress, the, the, the content that they produce, you know, speeches, articles, et cetera, was just deplorable. It was just pure political hackery. And so we always got, took it as a point of pride to make your content more intellectual and more robust. And, and because of that, I think you single-handedly brought many, many young people to the work of Mises and Rothbard. You know, uh, you were mentioning how we use the Mises Institute to help our office. But in some ways, it's sort of ironic. The first president of the Mises Institute, because he established the Mises Institute, was Lou Rockwell, right. and he had been chief of staff. So right. the second president of the Institute now was somebody that served as chief of staff. So I like the association. Matter of fact, I was very pleased that I could help you know, Lou when, you know, he started the, uh, the Institute because I consider, you know, the educational efforts so much more important than the political efforts. And you've heard of that course. story, uh, a lot before. Now you're in the Houston area and I always love it when I can get a uh, special guest into the studio. This is, uh, it makes it a little bit nicer for me and a little bit easier, but you were in Houston here just recently and you sort of got broken in with a very special event. What was the event all about in, in, in Houston? Well, we do several events every year that we call Mises Circles, which is basically the Mises Institute comes to you, and we put on a one-day event in a particular city, and we always do Houston, which is a great city for us in January. And so people in different parts of the country who might not be able to make it to Auburn, to our physical campus, can come to a Mises event and see scholars, people like Tom Woods, uh, see Lou Rockwell, you spoke. Um, so we really like the idea of bringing Mises to you, and we had a, an event event this weekend, this past weekend, which was about the police state and the growing militarization of police, which is a topic that's, that's increasingly in the news. And it was absolutely fantastic. We had a great turnout and we used these events to, uh, to provide outreach, essentially, to, to bring Mises to you. You know, er, early on, and this might be just my perception, early on, I think that uh, the makeup of the audience for almost every place I went, including the Mises Institute, was an older audience. But I get the light now because uh, the Mises Institute over the years has emphasized education, bringing young people in and giving scholarship. So I'm always delighted because there's always some young people there. And that would happen to be the case, uh, you know, this, this past weekend that a lot of young people there, and not only college student aid, there are some, you know, in high school, <laughs> you know, I think, I think uh, that is fantastic. So do you have, um, you know, some ideas on, uh, I know you're just feeling your way and things will continue, but every time a new person come in, sometimes they might have slightly uh, different ideas. Have you had any thoughts of, uh, of what oh, you yes. might do? Absolutely. I mean, we're in sort of a new era, you know, when Lou started the Institute over 30 years ago now, that was an era where everything was in print. And if you wanted to see a Mises, a speech from somebody at the Mises Institute, you either attended in person or maybe you got an old VHS tape of it or something like that. And then, of course, when the Mises Institute went online in the middle 90s, that was the, a huge leap forward. And, you know, obviously the digital age has created, given us the ability to spread Austrian ideas like we never had before. But now we're sort of find ourselves in, in almost a 3.0 era where you've got the rise of social media and you also have the, the sort of the dem demise 
of traditional academia, the bricks and mortars model where, where college costs so much and these, these young people are getting these degrees that aren't worth very much and oftentimes incurring a ton of debt in the process. So our Mises Academy is something that we are very, very, very optimistic about that we want, want as just a, a cheap, easy online platform where you can be sitting at home in your pajamas, you can be in Nigeria, you can be in Texas, you can be in Auburn, Alabama, or a, any point across the globe, and at a very low cost, get what we would call some real economics training that you're not going to get in, at your local community college, your local undergraduate college. And, you know, we're teaching hardcore Austrianism, uncompromising, principled stuff. We're also teaching philosophy, uh, political economy, you know, subjects that are broader than just technical economics. Yeah, and I think the image of the Mises Institute has always been economics. Of course, Mises is the greatest economist, you know, in, in the 20th century. So it's identified with economics, but just like this conference uh, you held in Houston had to do with the police state, which is civil liberties, you know, uh, and the attack on the American people. But uh, how about foreign policy? Uh, uh, the Mises Institute will talk about that as well, don't they? Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's part of our mission statement that we're, we're advancing Austrian economics, freedom, and peace. And of course, Mises himself wrote about this. He wrote about the concept of, of in socialist societies, you sort of at some point exhaust the ability to plunder folks within your borders. So, so socialist economies tend to be militaristic and warlike economies because they need to, to spread and uh, to consume. So uh, there's no distinction at Mises between so-called, well, I mean, we're not a political or policy organization, we're an educational organization, but we don't draw any distinctions between uh, what some people would say, foreign affairs or foreign matters. I mean, it all comes down to human action and economics at the end of the day. You know, in one of our uh, presidential debates, I think it was in 08, uh, the announcer, the interviewer came on and said, well, today we're going to be uh, talking about economics and not foreign policy. And, you know, and I even made a comment about that, that you really can't separate the two. And I think when you read human action, Mises never tries to separate. Matter of fact, he makes the, a pretty strong argument that these people who think that uh, war spending is good for the economy, uh, there's a lot of shortcomings in that argument as well. Of course. It's the, it's the old broken window fallacy yeah. at large. You know, and if you blow up people and then rebuild them that we generally do, it, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm very delighted that you're uh, in this position, and we're going to continue because we've worked closely with the Mises Institute. I think you're going to do a uh, great job, and I'm sure our viewers are very much aware, you know, of the Mises Institute. I think that they needed a good introduction uh, for you uh, since you're, uh, you know, a, the new president. And uh, Lou, uh, my guess is that Lou's going to be pretty close by, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe uh, less hands on with the Mises Institute. But he's still going to be uh, what the uh, he, will, he, he will remain president and CEO. No, oh, okay. Well, chairman uh, of the board. Chairman of the board. So that that'll be good. But um, any messages you'd like to leave with our viewers today? Um, about well, if people are interested, we always encourage people to go to Mises.org, which is an unbelievable treasure trove of information. And we're, we're building a whole new website that's going to be a lot more user-friendly in terms of its search function. But we have so much content at Mises.org. If you're interested in Austrianism, and so much of it is either free or exceedingly low cost. There's PDFs that are downloadable. There's eBooks, And then, of course, we have our bookstore. So really, at a, at a very small or, or no cost, you could, you could spend countless hours reading the, the free content that's on our site. Uh, let, me, let me ask you one more question, though, about how you got started in libertarianism and Austrian economics, and was there uh, one person that you had as a teacher? Uh, you, you probably have met somebody like Murray, but didn't study under Murray. Right. But uh, were you in college? Were you interested in, in these ideas? I was. I, fortunately, in, uh, when I was in college, my older brother, Steve, had, uh, I recall he had a copy of, of The Road to Serfdom, and I, I believe, I don't want to plug, but he's putting, he was, he was reading an early version of Reason magazine at the time. And uh, I, so I, I really owe quite a bit to him. And then uh, I guess just uh, tangentially through that, I, I heard about your 88 campaign when I was a college student and uh, ultimately saw you at a hotel yeah, where, you okay. did, where you spoke to a bit. And, you know, that was a long time ago and we didn't particularly meet at that time. And then fast forward a few years later, 1992, I recall it very specifically, my dear friend Joe Becker was studying at UNLV, getting his master's degree in econ under Murray Rothbard and Hans Hoppe. And of course, he had chosen UNLV 
strictly because Murray, Murray was on the faculty and he, and he was taking courses from him. So I had the opportunity to go up, drive to Vegas a couple times and sit in uh, on a couple of Murray's classes. Well, I, I was fortunate. I'm two or three years older than you are. <laughs> so I did get to get to know Murray very well and actually heard Mises lecture and knew Hans Sendholz. So I did get to meet a whole generation, but there's a new generation and it's much bigger. And of course, most of them are aligned with the Mises Institute. So if you haven't gotten to meet every single one that's uh, lectured at the Mises Institute, you're going to get to know them a, a lot better. And, uh, and, there, we'll continue to see how much influence the Mises Institute have, because I am convinced that that is where the real battle is. It's a battle of ideas, and you change people's ideas, and you know the the politics will change later on. And I'm also very much convinced uh, that it's not a Republican uh, uh, effort. Uh, you know, we talk about our revolution. It's not to reform the Republican Party, but it's to bring people together. It's easier to bring people together left and right on on uh, things about uh, the, the uh, police state and war. It's a little more difficult, and a challenge that you'll have is how are we going to win over uh, some of the progressives? You know, one of the things I find interested in Washington, people will come up uh, and other members respectfully will say, Ron, I really like it. The one thing is, is, is you are really consistent. And then I keep thinking, and they do it very in a very positive way, and, and, and then the conversation ends, and then I can think, of, well, if I'm consistent, why aren't you motivated to, to be consistent too? Because they recognize it, but uh, I've never pushed him and said, why aren't you consistent? <laughs> you know, so, uh, but, but I think that's our real challenge right now is uh, the, the failure of the system, you know, on war and NSA and all this stuff, bringing us a, a large group of people together. But at the same time, uh, we need to get to bring people together, you know, uh, in the economic sphere as well. Absolutely. So, but thank you, Jeff, very much for being with us and good luck with your new job. And I'm sure we'll be in close touch. Thank you. So, well, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. I'm sure you're going to find this interview uh, very fruitful and entertaining, as well as very productive, because I'm excited about Jeff's new job, and I'll continue to work with the Mises Institute. And uh, it'll be easy to find the uh, MisesInstitute.org and uh, keep up with all that they're doing. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm.